Okay, so welcome back. Now, in um, previous videos in this playlist, we've been talking about different aspects of data acquisition. And data acquisition in the engineering and scientific world is really, really important. It allows you to monitor different aspects of the real world, like monitor devices or monitor temperature, pressure, uh, motion, uh, mechanical stuff, electrical stuff. Monitor a lot of things about the real world and bring them into a computer, for example, and process them and analyze them. And it's really, really important um, to, to be able to do that with many aspects of engineering and science. So we talked about in previous videos um, different types of data acquisition equipment and software. And um, the, the last video in this series, we looked at a Arduino Nano, and we did a very simple uh, grabbing a burst of data, of low frequency data from this Arduino Nano and um, generating a CSV file and bringing that into Excel so we can do some very simple processing. Now, if, if the Arduino capabilities uh, are not what you need, there's also, we talked about previously in a three-part series, a higher end, like a $200, uh, a more professional data acquisition device. We talked about using that and it's got a wider range of voltage and a faster sample rate and that kind of thing. That was called a lab jack. And what we did is we generated a user interface in C-sharp um, to do some more serious analyzing, like frequency analysis. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at developing a C-sharp uh, user interface and analysis software um, to extend what we did in the previous video with the Arduino Nano, where we can do some um, frequency analysis and we can uh, grab bursts of data or long-term logging of data. To give you a kind of an overview on what data acquisition is, um, like I mentioned, generally you want to monitor like physical or electrical or temperature or pressure or something about the real world. And you need a sensor and or converter to convert those quantities into electrical quantities that you can feed into like a um, Arduino Uno or Nano or one of these lab jacks or one of the other data acquisition devices. And you feed these generally low, low level signals into this device. And in this case, it will send it over a USB into a computer. And here, depending on the type of data and the frequency and the analysis you need to perform, you might need a, a fairly um, complex user interface to allow you to analyze the data. And that's what we're going to look at this time, but we're going to be using our Arduino uh, Nano. So um, just to, to step back in uh, some of the earlier videos in this playlist, um, one, we had a three-part series where we generated from one computer, from the audio card, we generated a um, audio output signal and fed that into this LabJack data acquisition unit. And you could have done that with the Arduino Uno, probably. Um, and we sampled that data with this data acquisition unit and then sent it over USB 3 into another computer and grabbed these bursts of data. And in this um, other computer, we generated a C-sharp software that would grab the data. And you can see here, here's a, um, a piece of software that grabs the sample and then does a Fourier transform. And what we did uh, in a previous video was we developed our own software in C Sharp that does about the same thing, but it's a little bit more tailored to what, what we needed. So here is the software we developed. And again, I encourage you, if you want to see how to develop a C Sharp data acquisition software, um, look back in the playlist. And you can just basically get the device and you can see it found the device and you put in how many seconds of data at what sample rate, and you hit acquire, and it gathers data. Now I've got a um, one kilohertz uh, signal generator feeding into this LabJack data acquisition device. And you can see here's the um, waveform. And then I can click FFT, and it will automatically perform a fast Fourier frequency analysis. And you can see, uh, indeed, it's a 1,000 hertz or one kilohertz sine wave, okay? 
So that's really nice if you have some complex analyses you need to perform on the um, data you're receiving. Uh, the previous video to this um, in the series, we just used an Arduino Uno to grab some simple low frequency data. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to develop a, a um, C Sharp software very similar to this to work on an Arduino Uno. And it's going to look like this. So this um, C Sharp Windows Forms application is going to do something similar with an Arduino Nano. And um, I've got it hooked up now to the same signal I had before, which is one kilohertz, five volt signal. And I'm going to hit the read button and it's going to read 20 samples. It's going to grab a burst of 20 samples from the Nano and then print the results to the screen. And if you look in the previous video, you can see that um, the numbers we're getting are microseconds since the uh, sketch started and also a value from 0 to 1023 representing the voltage that was input from the signal generator. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit process and it's going to convert these values into numbers of time and voltage. And then what I can do is I can plot it and you can see um, I've now plotted the um, voltage coming into the nano and it's zero to five volts as we had in the previous one. You can see it's like a one millisecond period, which means one kilohertz waveform. So um, once you've got this data, you can do whatever you want in this um, C sharp application, any kind of analysis you want. But so what we're going to do in this um, video is we're going to walk you through the steps to make a sketch on the nano. It's a very simple sketch on the nano and the steps to make a C sharp application um, like this. So as we did in the previous video, um, we've got the Arduino Nano on the breadboard. We're just feeding a one kilohertz, five volt waveform into it. And we're also showing it on the oscilloscope. And I've got an offset from the waveform generator. So it goes from zero to, to five volts. So um, in the engineering world, generally, if you're going to design something, you first start out by figuring out conceptually what you want to do. You don't start writing code. I know a lot of software people love to just jump into the code. But in the engineering world, that's going to cause you problems guaranteed. So what we're going to do here is we're going to walk through a few steps to kind of visualize how we want this to work. And then once you've got that, it's a lot easier to, um, to write out your code. So I've got my Arduino Nano over a USB into a computer. And what we want it to do is as we showed in the previous video, um, it's going to monitor the A0 to ground and look at this 5 volt sine wave coming in. And what we want to do is we want it to get samples and fill and overwrite two internal arrays. And those are arrays of time and voltage. All right. And um, every loop, it's going to go through and overwrite those arrays. So it's going to have arrays of maybe 100 samples, 200 samples, however much uh, we can fit on the nano. And we have to keep in mind, as we showed before, there's only 2048 bytes of uh, static RAM on this nano. So we're going to have to limit our samples to that range. But basically, this thing is just going to go loop through and every however many seconds, it's going to grab a bunch of samples and fill the arrays and then grab them again, and grab them again. Now, what we want it to do is we want the computer to say, hey, give me a burst of data so I can analyze it. And the way we're going to do it with this is we're going to send a character B or a string B over the USB serial link to the nano and it's going to be listening. If it gets a B, it's going to do something because that means uh, hey, the computer wants a burst of data, so I need to send out what I've gathered so far in these arrays, okay? So if it gets a B, it's going to stop the loop of grabbing these samples and just focus on taking those arrays, the contents of those arrays, and sending them back over this USB to the computer uh, in a format that it can understand. So. If it gets a B character, it's going to stop its loop and it's going to send out, as we showed in the previous video, 
it's going to generate a um, set of CSV comma separated value strings for each sample. So if there's 20 samples it's been requested to get, there are going to be 20 strings that look like this. And it's got the microseconds time, which is an integer, with a comma and the value um, as, a, as an integer between 0 and 1023. Um, but also, if you looked at the previous video, we also did a print a serial print line to send this data back over the USB, which means it's going to concatenate a um, carriage return line feed character that you may not see, but they are going to be there. So we're going to have to be aware of that when we go to the computer and analyze each one of these um, bursts of data that come back. So if it gets a B, uh, on the serial USB, it stops sampling and just focuses on sending these bursts of data back. Um, when this computer receives all of the data, say 20 samples or whatever we, we requested, this guy's done. It's not getting any more input, so it's going to go back to just cycling and looping through and grabbing the 20 samples, looking for anything coming from the computer. If nothing, it keeps grabbing and overwriting its arrays. The computer, on the other hand, has to take this data, these string arrays, and make it useful. So it's going to trim and parse that string. Uh, it's going to get rid of these carriage return and line feeds because I can assure you, if you don't remember that, your data is going to get corrupted. So you got to make sure you get rid of these uh, trailing uh, characters in the string and then it's going to parse those into a couple of integers, okay? And here's the integers it's going to come up with. Then it's going to have to further process that to get those into useful values. Again, this, these, this time value is microseconds since the sketch started, which is kind of useless. So what we're going to do is zero that out and make it uh, incremental milliseconds rather than microseconds since the um, sketch started. And then we're going to take this 0 to 1023 value and make it into an actual voltage. So we process it, and then we might get values like 0.23 and 1.8 as floating or double numbers uh, that we can use to then plot. So now when you look at the application we're going to develop, um, it, it makes some sense based on what we just evaluated. The read is going to send a B request to the nano and as a result it's going to read 20 strings and then it's um, it's read those strings into the arrays and then what I want to do is I want to print the data on the screen and there's our 20 um, strings. You can see that it is now ready to do the processing so it's going to process those internally and then it's going to bring these, get these numbers and it's going to plot them. And you can see there's the plotted value. Okay, so now let's look first at the sketch we're going to develop for the Arduino Nano. And again, it's very similar to the one in the previous video. Um, we've made a few small changes, but basically it does the same thing. So uh, if you, I encourage you to watch the previous video to get up to speed on it. I'm going to go through this fairly quick. Um, we're defining the analog pin as a zero. Um, we're adding this receive value. This is the character we're going to receive from the computer. In this case, it's going to be a B to symbol, symbolize the burst request. So we've got a character. The setup, we're basically doing the standard serial begin, put in a, um, a baud rate. Pin mode, analog pin, which is A0, is going to be an input. Now the loop is um, very similar where, um, first of all, we define how many samples we want the Arduino Nano to capture each loop. In this case, we're starting out small with 20. Um, in the previous video, we talked about how you can see down here the maximum static RAM is 2048 bytes. Um, for this sketch, that means the maximum number of samples is under 300. Because the way we've got this configured, we've got a value and a time. The maximum here is about 295, I think. So again, one of the limitations of Arduino Nano is it doesn't have a lot of static RAM to store gathered data. But anyway, um, we've got the, the um, value 
array, and again, this just grabs data and throws them into array, the value with 20 samples in this case, and the time, which is an unsigned long, and it's got the same number of samples. So it's got a time and a value. Again, the int is two bytes per int. The long int is four bytes. So it's a total of six bytes per sample. And you multiply that out, and you can start to see why with 2,048 bytes of RAM, you can fit less than 300 um, samples. So the first thing it does is it goes through and grabs, in this case, 20 samples into those two arrays using the microseconds method and then the analog read um, to get the time and value. It does it as fast as it possibly can. It fills up those arrays. And then what it does is it waits to get that B command uh, from the C Sharp software. And it says, if there is serial data available, um, set the receive value to whatever it read. And if that receive value is the B that, that, the, um, that we were expecting, then stop what you're doing and go through and focus on sending via serial.print sending for those 20 samples, send the time, comma, the value. Uh, and again, we're going to do a print line. So it's going to put a carriage return and line feed. So it's going to come out with a string back to the computer that looks like the number, comma, the value with a carriage return line feed. OK, and you can add a delay just so you can see it a little bit uh, slower. But basically, it's going to send out that string. So that's basically the sketch um, for the Arduino Nano. OK, so um, I think this video is getting a little bit long right now. And I know the only time people have tolerance for long videos is with a video game. So I um, think in the next video, we'll get down into the C-sharp code to develop this um, software data acquisition um, application. So if you like any of these videos, I appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the like button. And otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.